with this thumbnail sketch, my first to make a refined sketch of it, you know, to turn it from just an outline into a clear use of black shapes. There we go. Like that, which is what we're going to bring into illust or not into Illustrator, into vector.com to make our image. What I'll do is on a new layer using that brush, I'll make an X where I think there will be black shapes, right? So X here, let's see, maybe an X here and here and here and then these for sure and then these. Okay, so now, what, now that I know one way that I can do it, There'll actually be two different ways because the other way is I can do the uh, X here, X here still, X here, X here, and then that and that. So I can show you both ways. Now I can make a duplicate of my sketch because it's all nicely closed and contained and I can play with the adjustments, go to levels, really darken the darks, brighten the whites. I'm trying to make sure there's no gaps. If there are, I can always paint them. And then I can use my paint bucket tool. And I'm going to follow these. So for my first option, which was this, I'm going to use my paint bucket, which is underneath the eraser underneath the gradient tool and I'm going to fill that in, fill this in, fill this in, fill this in, fill these. It's really nice if you sketch your logos with contained shapes, what we'll call closed paths once we get into the vectors because then they can be easily filled. Okay, so I squint. That's one approach where these would all be heavy outlines. The next approach would be this. So I need to do those steps again and really clean this up using levels, darken it, brighten it. And now, let's see. It would be like this. I'm going to fill in this head, fill in that stripe, fill in this, fill in this, fill these in. But I can't just leave it as line art. And then for good measure, I think for this design, I think I just want to thicken the lines here. That separate. All right, so that's one approach. This was the other approach. Of these two guys, which do you like better? That one versus that one. This one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and this one would also have a black eye, I think. Yeah, I think I agree. But that does weaken it to have that much outline. It does make it a little less visible from a distance. So, yeah, these are just the things you want to consider. That's a little bit more visible from a distance. And that's the way we go about making our sketches. I'm just going to go ahead and save that quick as a PSD.
but it shows you how you can kind of interrogate your best thumbnail. And then this is the one that I think has stronger potential. I think it's clearer and definitely relates to the theme in a very direct way. Okay, now we can close Photo P and we're going to start in a new program. So if we go to the actual assignment, after we post have posted our proving ground, we now go to where we post our logos. And I've started my post. I'm going to add my refined sketch. That's your first requirement out of three requirements for assignment four. And your refined sketch should show those black shapes. So you've thought it through. It can be rough, it can be low res, but it needs to make those decisions. Next, we need a clean black shape vector. And we are going to use a freeware called vector with no R, sorry, no O, dot com. And what's nice is that's linked, that freeware is linked at the top of the assignment directions. And the first thing it links you to is what's called the user guide. They used to have video tutorials, and they still do if you click on tutorials. And you can actually go through these. These are pretty helpful, like creating a Batman logo. They'll take you through the steps. And you can play with this. This is very similar to the project we're doing. And then I actually find this user guide even more helpful if you get stuck. And you want, for instance, help with the tools in the toolbar. And you can ex explore this on your own. We are making vector paths. And this does a lot to help explain what vectors are. Right? Vector graphics use mathematical equations to draw out your designs. These mathematical equations are translated into points that are connected by either lines or curves. Uh, I'm used to calling those points anchors because that's what they're called in Adobe Illustrator. These lines that are all connected, like connect the dots between different points or anchors, are called paths. And that path will have two features. It can have an outline and it can have a fill. We're just going to use the fill, and we're going to fill it with black. So it's like cutting out black shapes. So if we go back to the directions, it gives you the direct link to it right here. And to get into it, vector.com, it's helpful to log in. If you do that, just like in PhotoP, it will actually remember some of your work. But it's always good to save it as well to your own devices. So I'm going to log in here. This is taking a while. Maybe I'll sign into a different one. And I think this is more because of Google security. We are actually able to use it without logging in, too. But it is helpful to log in. I don't know why it's taking time. Let us see. So I'm just going to type in vector.com. And I'm going to say use online. And here it is. Okay, I'm going to say um, open file because we're going to open up our sketch, our refined sketch, which I have on the desktop right there. Click on that and it will open. Now you might ask, that refined sketch is made of pixels. It is a raster-based file. That's correct but this will just be a template for the vector that we create. Mm. 
the vectors do not take a ton of memory. But I'm going to close other programs. Running just in case, because this is taking a while. I don't like that. be the downfall of freeware but I just tested it this morning and last night it was working fine on this computer let me close some tabs here okay there we go so it opened up my sketch you're gonna see this looks very different than Photopea and it works very differently but it has some things that are familiar one is in the left hand toolbar here we have layers I'm going to recommend that you always have layers visible. Okay, next, you're going to see in your layers that they label them as you go. So this is what's called an image layer because this is a raster file. We can turn on and off the layer with the eyeball, just like we could in Photoshop. But very importantly for vector programs, we can also lock it so that we can't accidentally mess with it later. Vector programs have everything to do with selecting things to alter. They're actually designed to be used with a mouse. So you don't really need a tablet for this. Now, what I'm going to do is because I'm going to be building black shapes on top of this sketch, I want my image layer to be a lower opacity. So you'll see in the right hand, you have your fills, your borders, which is what it's calling a stroke, the thing that outlines it. It even gives you an option for shadows. And I'm going to take this opacity down to about 20%, maybe 30%. Let's do 25. And then I'm going to lock this layer. So this is now my guiding sketch, just like we did a guiding sketch for our landscapes, just like we did a guiding sketch for our creatures. The difference is now I'm going to use this tool. There are lots of ways you can build your vector. You can use the different tutorials to see. I'm going to show you what works best for this logo and the most prominent tool in any vector program, whether it's this, whether it's Adobe Illustrator, is the pen tool. But if you remember exercise two, you could also build it with shapes. And unlike the vector shapes available in Photoshop, you have a ton of vector shapes built in here that are mostly made for business graphics, but sometimes they can be helpful. But I'm gonna go right to the pen tool. And we're gonna start by trying to build just a single part of this. So the easiest thing to build with the pen tool are straight edge shapes. So I'm gonna start with the beak, I'm gonna click, and then click. Each time I click, it sets an anchor point. Click, click. Now I'm done with my straights. See that? So if I want to close it, maybe I'll click back here. And I'm basically making my own vector shapes. And then I want to close it by clicking where I started. This is what's called a closed path. Once I close the path, you'll get that little transform box around it that allows you to do things like rotate it, stretch it. If you hold down shift, you can distort it while you stretch it, just like in Photoshop. Okay, now notice that because I've done it as a vector, if I look at my layers, I now have an image layer underneath, and I have what's called a path layer. And this is a vector. And every time you have a path, you can have a fill color. And vector.com is kind of, kind of funny this way. It will give you a random, a random fill color each time. Because <laughs> this color can be anything. We want that fill color to be solid black for this project, for now. But that's not all. It also gives you a border. And the default is for that border to be turned on. That's why I saw a border while I was drawing it. That border can be made various sizes that are like point sizes of a...